tonight on Border Security. This man is hiding something. I was watching, I was observing you. But is he working alone? You were telling him what to do and when not. Yes. These filthy clothes could hold the key to a major investigation. Never smelt it pretty much that bad before. And weeks of careful planning... Can you wait here? ..couldn't predict what happens sir, next. Sir, sir, sir. Each day, thousands of passengers arrive into Melbourne International Airport and it's Customs' job to risk assess each person to make sure that there are no violations of our laws. Today, Officer John wants to take a closer look at these two men. Well, I was observing them just before the passport control, and I could see that the, uh, the younger guy was um, sort of coercing the older guy and, and, and telling him what to do, and they were behaving very suspiciously and, and nervously up there, and they just stood out. All right, I'm going to ask you some questions. So just tell me about your trip. You've indicated seven days. Yes, yeah, seven days. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do while you're here? Um, we sit over the hill, and I, I'm, after that, I know that um, it's over the hill and um, Queensland, Gold Coast. So you're going to the Queensland and, Queensland, and the Gold maybe, Coast? Maybe, maybe a few days. Maybe a few days. Who's this gentleman here? This, uh, he's my uncle. Your uncle? Yes, right. Why is he travelling with you? Because he don't know English. I can speak some English, so we can go together. So easy for 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 you for you to do your job. He's your what? Your father's brother? Or your oh, mother's brother? My, my mother, brothers. Is he older or younger than your mother? Who? Who is it? Your uncle. My uncle. He's more younger than my mother. He's younger than your mother? Yes. Uh, are you telling me the truth? Sure I am. You, you sure you are? Yeah, I swear. I can swear, I swear. Because we're going to check. Now, um, basically, um, the manager's been quite, is quite happy. In the now. outer suburbs of Sydney, Immigration compliance officers are preparing for an apprehension at a nearby steel fabrication plant. We've had three persons of interest at this premises, three Chinese fellows. Now, I do have uh, photos of the people that we are going after. Although intensive surveillance has already been carried out, the officers have to locate and then verify each of the targets on the premises. They could possibly escape via this um, back area there, but there's, it's such a large area, it's taken them a long time to get around. Mud maps and careful planning help seal the perimeter, but surprises are part of the job, and officers can never be exactly sure of what to expect. If you do not have a premises well uh, contained with officers on the perimeter, then people will attempt uh, to leave the premises via whatever exit if they have an opportunity to. Sealing the perimeter of a building and then locating their targets are the team's first priorities. My name's Diana from the Department of Immigration. You speak English? Each worker will have to be corralled into a contained room to have their identification checked. Guys, if you can just come inside, just won't be too, too long. But one man seems to be holding back, and his suspicious behaviour has officers concerned. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Excuse me. Many concealments are extremely difficult to detect as drug smugglers and syndicates look for new ways to beat the system. And today, a suspicious parcel from India has just caught the attention of officers. They've made no declaration on the package to say what it is, so we don't actually know. It looks to us like there's clothes in here. Officers Lisa and Michelle take the package to a deconstruction room to begin their search for any sign of a concealment and straight away discover a not-so-subtle clue. The first thing we noted was the smell. Yeah, it's not consistent. I mean, these clothes are dressed to be going to a shop in a suburb of Sydney, so you wouldn't really expect them to be smelling like that if they were going to a shop. It's really strong, really strong smell. Never smelt it pretty much that bad before. And I've got a cold and a blocked nose, and I can still smell it. <laughs> Sir, 
Tell me about your work. What sort of work do you do? Uh, I'm a salesman. I'm a sales. I'm, uh, I'm um, take order, uh, shoes order. Shoes? Uh, Two men who claim to be related are being questioned by customs officers in Melbourne. Before you came through the passport control, I was watching you uh, up, up mind, above the line. You were watching me? I was watching you, I was observing you. Yeah, okay. And you, you were telling that, that other man that's travelling with you, you were telling him what to do and when no, because yes, he... you were. And then when you approached the module, you took his passport and you were, you know... I took his passport. Because he's, he don't know English, I already tell you. Uh, before I, I come inside, I already tell you. My uncle don't know English. We're going to have a look through your bags, OK? Can, can, can. can. You've got a lot, of, a lot of clothes here, sir. A lot of clothes. You're only here for, for, for five nights. Yeah, because... You've got another pair of because why? Because why? Because why? Because I'm easy to get sweat. My body easy to get sweat. So if sweat, got one smell. Uh, smell, then the perfume also cannot bring in. So that's why my body is my body is it gets wet. You're here for five days and you got you got nearly twenty pairs of uh, undies. Why so many? No, I I don't want to look dirty, you know. Okay. Uh, because we want to show so you, some some show somebody. You can change your shirts three times a day for the for every day you're here. You, you brought a tie. Yeah. Well, you're on holiday. Why, why do you need a tie for? Because I saw in TV so many European or Australian they wear tie. So I want to fo well, follow your follow your style. Of, a lot of Malaysian people wear ties, but if I go on holiday to Malaysia, I'm not taking a tie. Oh. I can tell you that right now. Sir, I'm going to tell you straight out. I, I don't believe your story. <laughs> Immigration compliance officers in Sydney are at a steelworking factory suspected of harbouring several illegal workers. One by one, the names of any workers under suspicion are verified at the central immigration offices. Okay, last name? Okay, are you ready? Okay, is Papa Alfa Romeo? But this man's behaviour is undeniably suspicious. Guys, can you wait here? No, no, can you make sure no one leaves? Oh, where's he gone? Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sir. Sir. Sir, sir, sir. No, no, come back. Come back, thank you. No, no, yeah. sir. Sir. Sorry. Come back. Okay. No, no, no mobile phone, thank you. Turn the phone um, off. Off. They haven't checked his ID yet, but it's pretty obvious that he's got something to hide. In the mail handling centre, customs officers Lisa and Michelle are examining a parcel with an extraordinarily strong odour. It smells like vinegar, basically. It indicates possible heroin concealment somewhere in here, which is not looking obvious at this stage because um, they're closed and they don't, they don't feel as if there's anything concealed in here. And the dresses are dirty. They're not... They've got... They're, they're dirty dresses. They've been worn and they've got marks on them. Obviously, like this one here, I mean, what we can see is there's just buttons here and there's buttons sewn on at different points on the, on the dress that doesn't look like they really serve any purpose to be there. There's also buttons sewn onto the insides here, which really you wouldn't need. You wouldn't normally find that on a dress. The other thing is that they're all sewn on with bright coloured cotton. You can, you know, it's obvious that the buttons have been sewn back on. See? Doesn't look very good. You would never think that that button would have something in it. It just feels like a normal button on your shirt. Just have to wait and see if there's anything in here, though. Just looks like a normal button to me. At Sydney Quarantine, a passenger from a Middle East flight has declared just a bottle of rose water. But officers are suspicious that the declaration is a cover okay. for something else. This one, can you put this one down on that trolley for me, please? While Rita questions the woman in Arabic, 
Elizabeth discovers a heavy package wrapped in paper. This is labelled as white crystal sugar. Wish I had a bit with the side, it's like your tobacco. As well as the duty imposed, raw tobacco has huge quarantine risks, so officers need to make sure that the passenger isn't carrying any more. She wants to talk to you as we go, so, but okay. I want to do a manual on all of them. All of them? All of them. Okay. At Melbourne Airport, customs officers are trying to uncover the truth behind these two Malaysian passengers. This gentleman arrived from Malaysia and uh, he claims that, that this gentleman here is his, his uncle, which I'm not, I'm not convinced that's his uncle. And uh, he's got a lot of clothing, a lot more clothing than you'd expect to see for a seven day, seven day stay. And, um, I also think he's, he's very rehearsed, he's, he's prepared very well for this, so we can only see, uh, see what happens. Another officer is searching the belongings of the nervous second passenger. He also seems to have overpacked for a short holiday, and questioning him is difficult because of his lack of English. What did you want to come and see in Melbourne? Holiday seven days. Look, look. Holiday seven days. I swear I tell the truth. I, swear. I don't believe your story. So I'm going to give you the opportunity to tell me the truth about what, you, what your intentions are. Mm -hmm. OK? And before you answer, think very carefully about what you say. Yeah. OK? Mm. Yes, I understand. All right. So this is your opportunity to tell me the truth. Yes. OK? That's right. All right. It's all the thing I was say just now is fact. F-A-C-T. It's true. City fact. So this is packing for, for five nights? I, I just, and you're going to Phillip Island and Sovereign Hill? Uh, Sovereign Hill. Mm. And you're going to fly to, sit maybe, to Queensland and the Gold Coast? Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. I, I you got $2,000 at the most mm. to do all that? But I, I don't know how much the etiquette, the, from, from Melbourne to Queensland, I don't know how much the etiquette. Mm. It all seems very rehearsed to me. Very rehearsed. I'm telling the fact. You don't, you don't seem like a normal tourist to me. Zero, zero. Immigration compliance officers are at an outer Sydney metal factory tracking down suspected yeah. illegal non citizens. Thanks, boss. All right, that's fine. All right, no problem with that one. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, sweet, mate. One by one, the workers have been cleared until only two remain. They've uh, overstayed their visas, so we'll have to deal with them and just have an uh, extensive chat with them and just see what sort of decision we'll make regarding the immigration status in Australia. One of the men has been quietly but repeatedly trying to escape. Sir, 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 sir. No, no, yeah. sir. Yeah. Okay. No, no, come back. Come back, thank you. This man is out of options. He appeared not to speak any English, so I asked for some details. But um, he was also a little bit wary of, of us, possibly because of his status, I'm not sure. Uh, and on several occasions walked away from me and some of the other uh, DF officers. So it was quite obvious that there was a little bit of an issue. Pack yourself a, um, a bag or something like that. Just um, your overalls, because you're not coming back here today. And with a chance to change clothes, the man is escorted from the building, but continues to keep the officers on their toes. The man is taken to Villawood Detention Centre for further questioning. Quarantine officers at Sydney Airport have found several packages of raw tobacco concealed in a passenger's luggage. So now customs has been called. That is all tobacco. That is all tobacco. Kidding me? No. Okay. It's wrapped here as white crystal sugar. I asked her if she understood, and she packed the bag and that, and she said yes. And then when Liz started pulling them out, she said, oh, I didn't know, I didn't know. I said, how could you not know? That's obviously a commercial quantity. Yeah, you can't get this type of tobacco here. It is a very expensive tobacco if it's of good quality. So that's probably why they conceal it and they try to bring it in. 
Is this raw leaf, in your opinion? Well, it's like this. It all seems to be like this. Okay. Well, I'm opening them all up. I think she's going to be a lot of trouble. I'll have to get my manager because there's so much here. That's obviously a commercial quantity. As duty hasn't been paid on this tobacco, customs may charge the passenger duty or even prosecute. Customs officers believe that two Malaysian passengers arriving at Melbourne International Airport are not telling the truth about why they are here. I think that their intentions are to stay on and work in Australia. Now, their visa doesn't allow them to do that. They're here on a, on a tourism visa. And I think that basically what he's telling me is a load of lies. I come to your country with a happy mood, happy mood, M-O-O-D mood but you suspect me. Now I'm feeling, now my, in my mind, I'm feeling so down. Why? Because first time I go to visit your country, I want to be, I hope that, I pray to just, hope that I have a happy trip for holiday. I'm sorry, sir. I, I don't no, believe no, it's it. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's not personal. Okay, okay, okay. I don't okay. believe your story at all. Oh, never mind, it's okay. You don't have enough money to even think about going up to the Gold Coast and to Queensland. You don't know anything about Phillip Island or Sovereign Hill. But why do you want to go and visit there? I have one museum there. Around there, I have one big museum. So I want to know your history and your modern life. See how the difference between this one. I want to know more about New Zealand, uh, Australia. Sorry about that. Officer John has made a new discovery. The name on the passenger's credit card does not match the one on his passport. All your documents need to be issued in the name that's on your passport. You can't have a visa card in another name. At Sydney Airport, quarantine and customs officers are questioning a woman who has 10 carefully wrapped packages of undeclared raw tobacco in her luggage. First of all, she said that, uh, she, yes, she's packed her bag. Then when we started finding out that she's got the tobacco in there, uh, my brother-in-law opened the bag and he's packed it. And I said, how could he open your bag again and pack so much tobacco in there? And then the story changed again that, no, I, I had no idea that he's put the stuff in the bag. So we've got, no, we've got 10 of these. So you got some more here. If the passenger decides to keep it, the raw tobacco must be treated to destroy any potential threat to Australian plant life. Uh, we're just waiting for this lady to decide whether or not she wants to have her tobacco treated by quarantine. And if she decides she wants to do that, then we'll need to calculate how much tax and duty is payable on that tobacco, as there's so much. As you can imagine, it could be quite expensive. The passenger was very fortunate that she only received a fine of $110. OK, she doesn't want any of this, okay, so we're so not we'll going to it. heat treat it. Yep, we're going to destroy it. Frida, can you get the lid? At the International Mail Handling Centre, officers are examining the buttons on dresses which have arrived in a parcel from India. You can see there's a white, something white inside there. So it is well hidden and it's not easy to open. It would have taken some time. It looks suspicious to me. It's very hard. I think it's wrapped up in plastic. Yeah. Had all the air taken out. There, it's plastic. Under the plastic, there's a compacted powder, but officers still need to work out what it might be. We can put a small sample of this powder that we found here. If it is actual heroin, it will return. It will turn green. Heroin. There you go. Nice, strong, positive. Just a confirmation of what we already thought.
At Melbourne Airport, Customs Officer John is briefing his supervisor on the story given to him by a Malaysian passenger. Here's this guy's got enough clothes to stay here for months. He's got, he's got nine pairs of pants. He's got 15 shirts, he's got suit and tie. What, what did he say he was doing here? OK, the plan is they're going to go to Phillip Island, they're going to go to Sovereign Hill. And you asked him what Sovereign Hill is? Yeah, yeah, he has no idea. And then they're going to the Gold Coast, and he has not enough money to go to the Gold no, Coast. Yeah. Oh. Well, if, yeah, call them, see if they want them. Yeah. It's John, I've got, I've got these two Malaysians down here. Officer John makes a call to immigration. Customs are convinced that the two men are here to work illegally. All right, so, so immigration are on their way down and they're going to want to interview you further. All right. Can, can, can. Well, I think, I think you're here to work, sir. I think you're here to overstay your visa and work in Australia. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. You just do your job, I know. We'll, we'll just wait for immigration now. Okay. okay. Thank you. Immigration Thank officer you. Suzanne escorted the passengers to an interview room where they made a startling admission. Yvonne admitted that the passenger that he was travelling with was not his uncle, as he had told them down in customs, um, and that he had only met him a week before, um, and that it had been an arrangement that the two of them would come to Australia in search of work, uh, and that it had been arranged. Um, by a travel agent over in Malaysia. For well, once, I'm gonna stand my ground. Good job! I'm being poisoned. I'm getting very high ratings for cocaine. You could kill everybody on board the aircraft. You're making this up as you go along. Engage. I need to know how to help you. Customs helicopter hacked by your feet. I don't know if I'm making him nervous, but something is. I'm telling the truth. You are not telling me the whole truth. Get away. You let me no go to Australia? You think you might be hiding something in your shoes? That's border security.